MasterChef is back. Hundreds auditioned, and now the best 60 amateur cooks are through. I'm not that mad. Wait till you hear what's in my dish. But No, we call that enthusiastically crisp. Each week, 12 new contestants battle for just four places in the quarterfinal. It's so raw. Only the strongest will make it to the final challenges. Not as lovely as your pair. I love it. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Ten years, three wives, but only one co-judge. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six amateurs all think they've got what it takes to become Master Chef. But at the end of today's heat, only two will become quarter finalists. Welcome to Master Chef. Uh, fantastic competition. One of you could easily be the 10th MasterChef champion. So to start off, we're going to get you to do your own dish. Your calling card. Something that tells us about you as a cook. But please, for my sake and his sake, make it edible. Could you? You've got one hour to do it in. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck. Welcome aboard. Let's cook. I feel like I've always been a foodie, really. So hedonistic food. If you're cooking it for people that you love and then they're getting pleasure out of that, there's no feeling like it, really. Hello, Trina. Hello. How are you feeling? Fine, thank you. You're making a dessert? <laughs> yeah, I'm making raspberry and hibiscus flower tart. I get the raspberry and hibiscus, but is there no custard in the tart? What, yeah, there's creme, creme patissier. You're making a creme pat? Yeah. I'm happy about that. Why this dish rather than any, any other dish um, in the world? Because I love puddings. You might like them. Yes. But do you know how to cook them well? Well, my husband will tell you, yeah. Well done, Trina. Thank you. I'm excited. Good. I'm thank excited. You. does her tart right, it's going to demonstrate a lot of skill. She's going to make pastry, she's going to make creme patissiere, and then she's going to finish the tart with raspberries and make the whole thing look beautiful. Big job. My wife has always said, if I'd started cooking earlier in life, it would probably be what I'm doing for a living. So now it's time to have a look at whether that's possible. How much do you love food, Steve? Very much so. Food is what I do to relax. Food is not work. You do realise that that might all change and food <laughs> might become the most stressful thing in your life ever if you stay here. Yes. <laughs> I'm realising that now, actually. How good do you think you are? I think I'm fairly good. My strength is in invention. I don't tend to get phased. Something missing, something goes wrong, I'll adapt it, I'll change it, I'll move on. Stephen has the most fantastic array of ingredients on his bench. He's making little steamed money bags, which are pork and prawn, and he's making his own pastry. This money bag just shows me real ambition, an ambitious cook. Almost 20 minutes gone. I've always worked in the catering industry, but front of house. A lot of people, you know, say that I'm good at cooking. Hopefully I can get into the, the kitchen and follow my dream. Danny, forgive me. It all looks a little bit frantic over here. It is a little bit, yeah. What's going on? I'm um, just worried about the time. <laughs> just keep looking at my watch. You seem to have loads more ingredients and pans than anybody else. What are you cooking? I'm cooking a pan-fried sea bass with truffle mash, sautéed samphire and a mussel saffron and king prawn sauce. What are you trying to show us? You're not going to get through cooking a sandwich, are you? You're doing a, uh, doing a toasty, so all out first, first round. 
Good lad. OK. Well done. Cheers, mate. Thank you. You carry on being manic. Thank you, mate. Danny's really pushing himself. He's got to fill up the fish, he's got to make a sauce, he's got to do his muscles, he's got to chop up his prawns, he's got to do lots and lots of things all at once. I wonder, though, if that's just pushing himself a little bit too far. The thing about Kate is she is daring. And she's daring to be different by cooking a 1950s stew. Rabbit, suet dumplings and carrots. Fantastic. She gets this right. Brilliant. Kate, you've got scrumpy, you've got suet. It's very old and traditional, and you look anything but old <laughs> and traditional. What do you do, if you don't mind me asking? I've got a couple of jobs. I work for customer services, and then I also do fire performance, fire breathing, that sort of stuff, for a few different events. <laughs> That's unusual. It's, yeah. it's also creative. Mm -hmm. I would look at you and imagine your food to be a little bit wild. <laughs> it can be at times, but I wanted to go a little bit traditional today. Do you think you're good? Yeah. How good? I think I'm good enough. Thirty minutes have gone. You've got half an hour left. My first ever job interview after school was for a trainee chef, which I felt at the time is what I really, really wanted to do. A couple of days later, got offered the job, but unfortunately, I had to turn it down. Ever since then, it's been a burning passion, and it's something that I've always needed to do. What is it you're making for us, Greg? I'm making a, a brandy and ginger snack basket filled with white chocolate cheesecake, a limoncello jelly, meringue topping with a lemon sauce. That's ambitious. You've got to take risks. What makes you think a bald man called Greg will succeed on MasterChef? Well, you've managed to do it. This shows that Greg is truly inventive. Cheesecake inside a brandy snack with jelly made from limoncello. Brilliant. 20 minutes left. 20 minutes for your masterpiece. Lucy, what is it you're doing? Um, I'm doing a bit of a take on pasta puccinesca without the pasta. <laughs> so I've got pan fried cod with a parmesan crust. Why did you not do the pasta? I wanted to stretch it and make it my own and put my own creative take on it rather than just plating up a dish of spaghetti. If we go through, will you make me some pasta? Absolutely. Promise? Yes. Thank you. Lucy is making a strange dish because instead of cooking pasta, she's taken the pasta and she's replaced it with a piece of fish. It does show me that Lucy's an inventive cook, but I wonder if the inventions are going to work. Last five minutes. Disaster. Just three minutes. Final sixty seconds. That's it. Time's up. Stop. For his calling card, Stevens made oriental money bags, prawn, pork and shiitake mushroom dumplings, served with ginger and rice wine vinaigrette. I like the way you've made the baskets. I like how light they are. I do like the meaty filling you've got in there. I also like the ginger. However, it's too salty for me. I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I really like it. I love the flavours of the prawn and the pork and the shiitake, all smoky. I like the saltiness that comes with it, and I love the textures. I think this is demonstrating somebody who's imaginative and somebody who's, who's got some guts. I ain't got a complaint, Stephen. Thank you. The first challenge has been completed. I got the dish on the plate. It presented well. I was quite pleased with that. <laughs> 
fire dancer Kate's dish is a rabbit and cider stew with carrot dumplings, potatoes and bacon. Kate, it's delicious. The cider makes it really lovely and rich. Your rabbit's not dry. I like your light little dumplings with the fennel and the carrot through them. And I think good on you. I like it. It's all well cooked. I haven't got an issue with the dish. As a bowl of stew, it's a very, very good bowl of stew. I love it, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. Deputy pub manager Danny has made sea bass topped with samphire a courgette stuffed with truffle mash and a prawn mussel and saffron sauce. Danny, that is incredible presentation. That's a beautiful plate. Thank you. No wonder you look so manic, if this is what you had in mind. There's so much in there to be pleased about. Really like the way you've cooked the fish and I love your saffron sauce. However, the mashed potato has lumps in it and putting it inside a courgette is a mistake. Okay. Courgette is really watery. Yep. You're getting water from courgette going into mashed potato. Mm. However, the processes you've gone through and your presentation skills and the technique you're showing here in the early round of MasterChef is applaudable. Danny, I agree with Greg. You've got a lot of skill on this plate. This shows a really ambitious cook, Danny. You've been pretty busy at this plate. Well done. Thank you very much. Classroom designer Lucy's calling card is parmesan-crusted cod on olive potatoes with a puttanesca sauce. I know your inspiration because you're talking about puttanesca, which is a very strong sauce served with bundles of pasta. It's strong with tomatoes and capers and olives, strong with parmesan cheese and basil, but my poor little fish, it has no flavour anymore. You can't taste that beautiful fish. But I've got to say, I love the way you've cooked the fish. I love the crust. I like the depth of flavour in your tomato sauce. From this, I, I get that actually you have a decent touch. However, you need to readdress the flavours that you are using. Mum of Three Trina's dessert is a tart filled with creme patissiere, topped with raspberries and hibiscus flour and spun sugar, served with hibiscus syrup and edible glitter. Really love your presentation. Uh, I really like what you've done, demonstrating your skill by making your own pastry, making your creme patissiere, little swirls of sugar on top. The hibiscus flour is a difficult one because it sits in only one place. To me, it feels like you need to flavour it more with hibiscus. It needs to be a little bit sweeter. Be brave with your flavours. Okay. It is a skillful dish. It could taste a lot better. Okay. Van salesman Greg has made a brandy snap filled with white chocolate cheesecake, a limoncello jelly, and topped with meringue. It's served with a lemon sauce. I've done the cardinal sin of uh, burn the brandy basket. I had to serve it with it because that's the centre of the dish. So I'm um, disappointed with that. That is really seriously good. Well, wow. It's a shame it's a little bit burnt, I mean, but like, that is really good. That is toasty and nutty, big grown-up flavours, loads of skill. Shame it got a little bit burnt. I'm, I'm going to overlook it, because that's good. Thank you. Really good. You can't, you can't overlook that it's got burnt, Greg. I just have. <laughs> I can't overlook the fact that you burnt your basket. I just can't. Yeah, of course. But what's inside your basket, it's a joy. Creamy, sweet cheesecake, sharp, warming alcohol from the limoncello, sweet meringue on top of it, and then you've got this little lemon sauce that's curd on the side. It is really clever. Thank you. Flawed because you burnt it, you duffer, yeah. but it's really clever. That means a lot, thank you. Relieved, pleased in the end. Thought I'd uh, done a disaster, but luckily enough, the flavours came through. Yeah, happy. Thanks very much for cooking your calling card for us, because now we've got an insight into you as cooks. You're now going to take a break, 
And then when you come back, we're going to start the competition in earnest. Thanks very much indeed. Off you go. John, this is the sweet or savoury invention test. Blue box, sweet ingredients. Green box, savoury ingredients. Your choice. Yeah, I'll go sweet. Really? Yeah. John has an hour to invent a dish from popped rice, coffee granules, eggs, pastry, dark chocolate, walnuts, thyme and beetroot. He also has a basic larder. I think that's ghastly. <laughs> I'm going to do a walnut and thyme sable biscuit with a chocolate and coffee mousse in the middle of it. John, on your own head be it. Yep. The problem I've got is making sure the chocolate mousse sets within the hour. Mousse is in, praline's done. Where's the biscuits? I would expect this to be more technically challenging than the contestants would do, but then you never know, do you? Are you actually making an edible puzzle? Yes, that's it. Right. They don't work. I'm out of the competition. You've got six minutes. Thank you. You're going to get it out. From the sweet box, John's made thyme sable biscuits with a walnut and popped rice praline, coffee and chocolate mousse, and a sabayon served with chantilly cream. That is a yummy, melty, biscuity, chocolate, coffee, nut cuddle. Thank you. Let's get them in, let's see what they can do. Now the competition truly begins. The blue box contains the ingredients to make a sweet dish. The green box has got the ingredients to make a savoury dish. We're now going to give you 10 minutes to design your dish. Everybody now choose. Oh, what a shame. Not a single dessert in the whole room. Wish I had picked the dessert ingredients because I could have, I could have done something really good. Today's savoury box contains pork tenderloin, steak, Parma ham, butternut squash, figs, a lettuce, Calvados apple brandy, and black-eyed beans. You know the rules, you'll have one hour to create the dish. At the end of this, two of you will be leaving the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Panicking again? It's just Danny's style, that. Is that Danny's yeah, style? I've already had a uh, fire in the kitchen. <laughs> We loved your dessert. Thank you. Why didn't you do another one? Um, just wanted to show a bit of versatility. What are you going to burn for us, Craig? Nothing on this round. There's a magic box of ingredients, and people are playing it really safe. Pork served with pumpkin and potato. That's what we're going to have, by the looks of it. Kate. You don't appear to be doing pork in parma ham. I'm doing sweet and sour black beans and Japanese style of sweet and salty omelette. Is this absolute invention, Kate? Yeah. Oh, not off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway. 
I like the look of your potato. Yeah. Mm. Is it something you've done before? No. But I have seen it done before. Stephen, you said you were most looking forward to the invention test. That was the sort of cook you were. I like big flavours. I don't believe you should put something on a plate if you can't taste it. You've got only 15 minutes. After the last round, what are you keen to demonstrate? I thought, whatever it is, I'm not doing a dessert. I just want you to see that I can do lots of different things and lots of different techniques. Just three minutes. You have 90 seconds. Most of these contestants may be cooking the pork. We're going to have five very different flavoured pork dishes. That's it. Time's up. From the savoury box, Lucy's chosen to make mustard stuffed pork tenderloin on a potato and parma ham galette with butternut squash cubes and a pork reduction. Lucy, I like it. I think there are things on there that are really clever. Your pork is still moist. I love the mustard flavour inside of it. I really adore the little sweet butternut squash you've got on there. My perception of you now is of a much better cook than it was in the other round, you'll be pleased to know. Your potato galette, I think, is inspired, and you get this comforting flavour of crispy ham like you're eating a pizza. I think there's some really nice, promising bits on this plate, Lucy. Really pretty good indeed. Well done, Lucy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm kind of relieved that <laughs> that bit's over. I was pleased that I was able to put up something that was a bit of an improvement from my, my first dish. So, yeah, I'm quite happy. Trina has made pan-fried steak with garlic mash, a creamy peppercorn sauce and butternut squash crisps. I quite like the look of it. I think you can actually try and get it on the plate, though, Trina, if you can. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, there is sort of this little edge around the outside so that, you know, you get the stuff in the middle. Well-seasoned steak, nicely cooked, mashed potato, lovely and creamy. Your little attempt here at these crisps, they just won't work. Butternut squash, got too much water in it. I can't find fault. I will, however, say it's not the most adventurous mm -hmm. invention I've ever seen. It wasn't very creative and crazy, but I just felt I wanted to stay with something that I knew. Danny has cooked pork medallions on fondant potatoes topped with parma ham and served with a fig glaze black-eyed beans and a butternut squash puree. Lots of work again. Outlandish presentation again. My main flavour I've got is of a fig roll. That's a biscuit and I was expecting something a little bit more savoury. Your potatoes are cooked really, really nicely. The rest of it's a bit sort of sweet and jammy for me. I like the way you've made the squash, I like the way you've made your fondants, and I don't mind the sweetness with the pork. I think you've got skill, I think you're putting in bags of effort, lots of technique, and I appreciate it. Good, Danny. Thank you very much for Thank the comments. You. Thank you. Glad it's over. That was the one I wasn't looking forward to. But and overall, I'm happy, to be honest with you. You know, it could have been a lot worse. Greg has wrapped the pork tenderloin in chilli spiced parma ham and served it with butternut squash puree and a fig baked in calvados. Your lines are beautifully clean. Quite what the herbaceous border is doing sticking out of it, I've no idea. Is it an aerial? 
Are we supposed to get Radio 4? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> Greg, I need to tell you that after such a super duper splendiferous start, I'm a bit disappointed, mate. Okay. Because your squash is watery, and that is also washing out the flavour of your pork. Your pork's cooked nicely, the figs, okay. But it is what it is, considering the wonder of your dessert. With the way you've cooked that pork very well, I remain convinced that you're a decent cook. However, I think you've really let yourself down here, and I don't think you've pushed yourself hard enough. OK. Devastated, to be honest. I didn't think it was too bad. I just thought the flavours would be good enough. Um, obviously not. Stephen has stuffed his honey-glazed pork with onion, chilli and ham and served it with garlic mash and a creamy mustard sauce. It's a bit anemic. It's all cream. It's all cream, yes. The presentation probably not the best. Your mashed potato is lovely. The pork is dry. I don't think the dish works. Bagger. I find your sauce a little too thick and a little too sweet. I can see the promise that I could see from you earlier round, but the way you've cooked the pork is, is disappointing. Great first round, though. Disappointing second. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you much. A little disappointed. Uh, presentation wasn't great. Let's just hope I've done enough to show that I've got potential. Kate has made a sweet and sour black-eyed bean puree topped with a Japanese-style omelette, a spicy ginger pork medallion and fried onions. You dared to be different here, Kate. You went for it big time. I really like your Japanese omelette. It's sweet, it's savoury and it's really interesting with the flavour of the pork. There's bits I find a bit weird. The beans, they're a bit sweet, but I like bits of that as well, you know? I really like that omelette and I like the flavour of the pork. Okay. Sweet beans on a, on a savoury pork dish isn't great. It, it's not particularly pleasant. But I like the chilli flavour you have on the pork and I also like the flavour of your omelette. That is light and it's salty like soy. It's very nice. Thanks, Kate. I feel like I've let myself down a little bit with that one. Possibly next time not try to be so adventurous and out there. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay. I am so confused after those two tests. So confused. The problem is, the people who did great food in the calling card round did bad food in this round. The people who did bad food in the calling card round did great food in this round. Where do we go? Let's talk about Danny. Danny's the only contestant, I feel, that can walk straight through to the next round. Just purely because of the skill he showed, the technique he's shown, his presentation may be a bit OTT. His pork dish was fig sweet, but he looks to be the most accomplished cook in the room to me. I think we keep Danny, but as for the rest of the other five, Greg, I don't see how it's easy to make a decision on them. I've got one other I'd like to keep. Who's that? My namesake. Greg? Yeah. Greg does this amazing dessert. You and I are in awe of it. Then the invention test, we get a piece of pork on a watery puree with a baked fig with a rosemary twig sticking out of it. I know he let himself down, but he still had one of the best cooked pieces of pork in the room. OK, fair enough. All right, good. Good, so he stays. Danny stays, Greg stays. <sighs> Tell me about Lucy. 
Because I've got to say, with Lucy, I thought that fish was cooked beautifully, but overflavoured. And this time, I thought that pork dish was stunning. I like Lucy. I'll tell you what, I think that's progress. And, th and that's what you want to see. We've now got Danny in, Lucy in, and Greg in. I've never seen such a contrast as Stephen. You've got those little Asian money bags that you absolutely loved. And then we have a piece of dried pork soaked in vinegar on a thick, oversweet cream sauce with some nice mashed potato. I can't recognise the cook that gave me one of the worst bits of cooked pork with one of the worst cream sauces I've ever had to sample. If I go home today, I'll be disappointed. I hope I've done enough. Nothing else I can do. Kate has left me guessing. The cook that made me that wonderful rabbit stew then came back and did something which was completely experimental. Yes, it's a daring cook who does a Japanese omelette and a piece of pork and a bean puree, but daring in maybe not a good way. I feel like I'd need to really, really up my game if I got through. Trina is particularly difficult to judge. I had a raspberry tart that had no flavour and she's just given me a piece of steak and mashed potato, John. She just hasn't pushed herself. I really hope they see something in me that they will take me forward. Really, really do, but I don't know. Three are in, we know they are, and now we've got to send two people home. I've never seen such a topsy-turvy start to the competition. We have made a decision. The first person to leave us is Stephen. Bit disappointed that I've let myself down on that test. Those are the breaks. You can't turn the clock back. Just got to accept it and move on. The second person to leave us. It's a long, busy, adrenaline fueled day. But I wouldn't change it. And I'm glad that I've done it. Congratulations. Well done. Now we ramp up the pressure. You are going to be cooking for three champions and finalists of MasterChef. Natalie Coleman, Tim Anderson and Dr Tim Kinnaird. Today it's going to be like a service. You will have one hour to put up your main course orders. Then after that, another 15 minutes to put up your dessert orders. This will determine which two of you go through to a quarter final. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Now I'm excited because we've got four cooks and the last two rounds were all topsy-turvy. Now they've got to prove to us they've got consistency. It's all about timing. They've got to get it right. Cooking for MasterChef champions really makes you feel a little bit nervous. I'm hoping that they will have a little bit of empathy for me because they've obviously been in that position before. But ultimately, I want to impress them. Lucy, what are you going to make for us? I'm going to do a chicken laxa. It's kind of like a broth, like soup with noodles. I know how important it is to get the balance perfectly right, so that's my biggest test, really. And then for pudding? Kind of thinking about a pina colada, so I've got a coconut and rum sponge with pineapple cream and a pineapple syrup. Yum! Bit of Asian food and a cocktail. Yeah. What about timing? I've practised it quite a few times. One time I've been over, the other time I've been under. So I'm just hoping that today's the time when I get it perfectly right. Uh, Lucy, good luck. Thank you. 
laksa. It's creamy with coconut, spicy with chili, salty with fish sauce, but it's going to be vibrant and packed full of flavour. A coconut pineapple sponge with rum sounds really interesting. And that pineapple has to be really vibrant through that sponge. I'm really determined. I don't want to go home. I've really got the bug for this now. I want to go as far as I can go. What, Greg, are we going to see today? Are we going to see the hard work in, Greg, or the cop-out, Greg? I've taken your comments on board and I'll come back fighting today. What are you going to make for us, Greg? Pan-fried cod fillet on a bed of green parsley mash served with a beurre blanc, brown shrimp and mussel sauce. And a pudding, my friend? Um, pudding. I'm going for the chocolate fondant pudding with a star anise flavoured beetroot puree. You are aware of the catastrophic list of failed fondants in this competition, aren't you? Yeah, but I won't be one of them. It's a huge amount of work, Greg. It is. It's tough going, but if I pull it off, um, uh, hopefully that'll be a quarter-final place. What I think Greg is doing right now is putting one too many ingredient on both of his dishes. Saying that, I'm really pleased that he stepped back up to the mark. I'm really pleased to see the Greg that we first recognised as being a good cook back in the room. Halfway. Half an hour gone. I'm going to be working extremely hard today because I've got a lot to prove. I just need to get my timing right and get on with it. <laughs> Kate, you had an up and down invention test, but this is back to your own food again. Yes. How does that feel? Much better. I'm not experimenting this time. I know this tastes good. So what are we going to get? This is pork meatballs with jalapeno cornbread and hot <laughs> jalapeno salsa. Then for after, there's white chocolate and chilli key lime pie. All sorts of things. You've got a lot of work to do, Kate. <laughs> I know I have. I know I have. Is it going to be so hot that we could be breathing fire? Oh, maybe it's going to have a little bit of chilli in it. Good luck. Kate's cooking food that she says she's really into. Mexican spicy food. Brilliant. As long as she doesn't make it too wishy-washy, it's got to have proper punch. It's gone up a notch today, hasn't it? This is MasterChef. The opportunity of a lifetime. You only get it once. Not everybody gets that once, so you've got to grab it. Danny, how much pressure are you under today? <sighs> Enough, but I'm not flapping as much. You may feel a little bit calmer. You look just as manic to me as you always I'll do. Always be manic. Always manic. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. I'm doing a snail and rabbit paella with baby artichokes, peppers. I'm actually making a real ali ali as well to go with it. And what's that you're doing? Fig, raspberry, tartan. Is it good enough for a quarter-final place, Danny? I hope so. I mean, the only problem with this dish is you can't really do much of the presentation. I need to make it taste good because I can't fall back on my presentation on this. Good luck. Thank you very much, guys. Danny's got a snail, rabbit and artichoke paella. I think that sounds delicious. Yummy. But all those bits in that paella have all got to be cooked perfectly, even though they are different beasts and different textures. This is your final five-minute call. In 2010, paediatrician Tim Kinnaird made it to the finals. It was sad not to win initially, but that lasted about two and a half minutes. He went on to quit medicine and follow his dream. I started off making macarons at home on our kitchen table, and it just grew from there. Three years later, he opened his first patisserie in Norwich. I opened the shop eight months ago. We sell our macarons. I like detail and precision, but just mainly just making stuff that's absolutely delicious. I have the best job in the world and the best place in the world. I didn't win MasterChef, but I got everything I ever wanted out of it. That's good. Tim Anderson won the crown in 2011. We all partied pretty hard the night of the final. 
I woke up the next morning hungover and wondering if it was all some fabulous dream. After extensive work in the food industry, he's about to open his first restaurant. We have found premises in East London. And I'm also writing a book. And it's all southern Japanese food. I'd love to go back and show John and Greg what I can do now. Because I'm so much better. <laughs> so much better than I was. Oh, I was just terrible. 2013 champion Natalie has spent the year working with some of the country's best chefs, including Tom Kitchen, Tom Kerridge, Theo Randall, and Daniel Clifford. Most chefs, not even trained chefs, get a chance to work with all these people. I've learned a lot. It's helping me to change my life, to move into something I want to do. You've got six minutes, first course. So Lucy's a main of a fragrant Thai chicken laksa. Smells good. It could be great or it could be sort of watery and bland. And also the chicken can't be dry or tough. All right. Service. On time, well done. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So I've cooked for you a fragrant Thai chicken laksa with some crispy shallots, Thai basil, coriander and mint in the sauce. It's a very striking, lurid, greenish yellow colour. It is fragrant, the menu didn't lie. Chicken's cooked nicely. I think the broth itself didn't quite deliver. I think it needs a little bit more spice. It's a little bit thin and maybe a little under-seasoned. I'm not tasting any of the basil. I'm getting the coriander and the lemongrass, but not the actual basil. It's not vibrant enough. It needs to be headier. It needs to be thicker. It needs to be more shocking. It's shocking, all right? It's insipid and it's watery and the chicken is drying out. 15 minutes and pudding, yeah? Say something, Lucy, even if it's only shut up Baldy. Yes, yes, I'm on it, I'm on it. Brilliant. The dessert, the rum and coconut sponge, I think that sounds delicious, um, as long as all the flavours are there. I really want to taste the rum in particular. People underestimate sponge. It's very easy to make a bad sponge. Well done. For you a rum and coconut sponge with a pineapple cream and pineapple syrup. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. It actually looks kind of elegant. Yeah, I think, you know, it's tidy and it's refined. It feels like a sort of a, a regular sponge mix and then she's folded through desiccated coconut into it. Coconut, vanilla and pineapple, brilliant, but it's more of a coconut texture than a coconut taste for me. I'm not getting the rum. Is there rum in it? There's supposed to be rum. Mm. I think she's certainly shown promise. Pretty good food, needs a little bit of work, but so does everybody. Yeah. So did all of us. Wow. That pudding should be strong and sensational and voluptuous, and it's a bit flat. I'm not over enthusiastic about it. I'm slightly disappointed. There wasn't any major mistakes. I think it was OK. It's hard to tell. Plate up, now. Yeah, yeah, you've got to go. Greg, pan-fried cod fillet on a bed of green parsley mash, baby leeks with a beurre blanc, brown shrimp and mussel sauce. You've got one minute. If that tastes as good as it sounds, it's going to be amazing. It's making my mouth water. You are two minutes over. Thank you. Today I've cooked for you a pan-fried cod fillet on a bed of green parsley mash in a beurre blanc, brown shrimp and mussel sauce. You enjoy. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It smells fishy. It smells, it smells fishy in a, in a good <laughs> way. It smells like the sea. It does. Yeah. And it looks how I'd hoped it would look. Fish is cooked well. Fish is perfectly cooked, mussels perfectly cooked, sauce is good and flavorful, mash is good and flavorful and creamy. Crisp skin would be nice, but that's 5% of the cod, and the other 95% is excellent. It's all well proportioned and balanced, and you just want to keep on eating it because it's like, oh, got a little shrimp, or yeah. <laughs> got a little leek. I think he's done very, very well. I'm looking forward to this pudding now. Almost there with this, John, because the cod is nicely cooked, the mashed potato is buttery. I like his cooking. I've got to remember he's still an amateur. It's not a bad attempt. Because you've gone over, you've now only got about 12 minutes. How long do they take in the oven? 10. So you're cutting it fine again, aren't you? Pudding, chocolate fondant with a beetroot puree. And the fondant's ready to come out? No. Ah, not rising. I know beetroot and chocolate work well together, but a puree and a fondant, I'm not 100% sure about. You've got three minutes. Will that be enough? No. Does that mean we're going to be late? It looks like it. Got to go. You make me nervous now, Greg. Come on, mate. Yeah. Best three, Greg. And let's go. For dessert, we've got a chocolate fondant pudding served with a star anise flavoured beetroot puree. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. Cheers. He's had unmoulding issues. <laughs> but I'd rather have it fall into pieces and gooey on the inside yeah, than overcooked. <laughs> Looks like a chocolate river, so I'm quite happy with that. The puree is just cold and it's grainy and it's watery. If it had just put the fondant on and walked out, brilliant. The beetroot is a problem here, mm. but the fondant itself makes me forgive. I think Greg's had a really good day in the kitchen today. I mean, he's, he's a beetroot puree away from being able to walk out of here today feeling really proud of what he's done. I love the flavour of his chocolate fondant. This one has collapsed, the others look fine to me. However, what on earth is that aniseed beetroot? It tastes to me like I've got a cross between an aniseed ball in my mouth while I'm eating a beetroot sandwich. We leaved it over, but thoroughly enjoyed it. It was tough, but I really enjoyed it. Kate's cooking Mexican pork balls with hot salsa and cornbread. There's nowhere to hide with that. You've got to get it right. Otherwise, you just look like you've made pork balls in a spicy sauce. Oh, that hasn't worked at all. So that one out. Good. Smile, it smells great. Come on, chin up. This is pork meatballs with a smoky tomato salsa sauce with jalapeno and mozzarella cornbread. Thank you. Thank you. It's not what I was expecting. No. I was expecting a kind of meatball stew type thing. I'm not really getting much flavour of anything from the bread. The flavour of the bread is not corny enough. The pork meatballs themselves have a good texture, but nothing has a really full-on flavour. I don't think it quite knows what it is in terms of flavours or presentation. She might be cross with herself about bits of this. I'm disappointed with her salsa. However, I love the meatballs and I love the flavour she's playing with. These desserts need to be out of here in seven minutes.
Kate's cooking the white chocolate and chili key lime pie. I love key lime pie. The only danger I think with the dessert is the white chocolate being too sweet. On time, no issues, well done. So this is my white chocolate and chili key lime pie. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. That's nice. That's really nice. She's got a nice crunch on her base. I think this is delicious. I like the textures of it. It's kind of that sort of warm, bouncy, eggy top. And then the crunchy base is brilliant. And it works really well in your mouth. And the flavours are fantastic. It's very rich and indulgent. I could eat the whole thing. And maybe I will. It's tasty food and it's interesting to see someone who at this stage of the competition's got a... This is the sort of food I want to cook. She's got a style emerging, I think. What Kate's made is a decent key lime pie in texture and in flavour. I think it's a good example of it. I quite like it. I have no idea whether I've done enough. I have no idea. I'm feeling better now I've got the dessert out and I'm feeling better that it was all done on time. Danny's main rabbit time at Escargo Paella with aioli. That just sounds incredible. Rice is cooked. Yeah. Good, let's go. It'll be fantastic if the escargot is cooked properly, because it can be really tough and weird. Good mate. Thank Looks you. Looks lovely. Thank Looks you. really good. Right, I'm serving you a snail, a wild rabbit, a baby artichoke, and pepper paella with a authentic alioli. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank Lovely you. to meet you. Cheers. I think it's a really fun presentation. It's quite, you know, the little micro herbs and the snails and stuff. It looks fun. The taste of the paella is lovely. The core flavours and the rabbit and the snails are brilliant. I like it. I think the rice itself is really well cooked. I think the flavours really work well together. I think when you get a, a bit of that aioli, I think that sort of brings it all together and brings it to life. The snails are juicy, the rabbit is moist, the rice is nice and soft. That's lovely. OK. Fruit tatans, 15 minutes. Yeah. Go on, son. Knock them dead. For dessert, raspberries, figs, vanilla, almonds, mascarpone, they're all winners to me. Let's just hope his tarts turn this crispy on the outside and nice and caramelised on the inside. You've got a minute. <sighs> Good boy. Thank you. Good boy, let's go. That's a fig raspberry tartan with mascarpone and an almond praline and a tiny little coulis around the side. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think it's a bit of a pastry roulette. I think there's some crispy bits and some soft bits. Actually, you can't fault the taste of it. It's really nice. I wasn't sure why you do figs and raspberries, but they work together. The fig is rich and the raspberries is kind of tart. That's really good. This is interesting food. It's nice food, it's tasty, it's enjoyable. I'm pleased to came. The pastry is a little soggy, I'll forgive him. I'll tell you what I do love, I love the combination of fig and raspberry. Absolutely love it. How can you forgive that? That is cheese. Well, because it tastes good. Oh, my God. Heart is absolutely pounding. That was intense. That is like nothing I've ever experienced before in my life. 
Well, we had some ups and downs there, didn't we? I've got to say, I enjoyed the majority of the food. Can I praise Greg and slap him around the face at the same time? Because Greg's fish dish, he was very, very good. That piece of fish was cooked beautifully. The mashed potato was well flavoured. The sauce was a great idea. Greg delivered fondants, very, very good fondants, but what on earth was that beetroot doing on the side? If I left at this stage now, I would be, everybody said, but I'd be devastated. Kate cooked well, but some of her flavourings were a little bit off. Probably not quite enough seasoning in her cornbread, and her meatballs probably not quite powerful enough. The key lime pie, it was a fine little thing. Baked a little white chocolate cheesecake flavoured with lime, that was great. I feel I've given that a good shot, so there's nothing else I can do, really. Lucy. Lucy gave us a laxa first off. Uh, I'll probably call it a lacquer, cos it was actually lacking in any flavour. I like her dessert, the coconut, the pineapple. It just needed more rum. I'm glad that I put up dishes that I was pleased with. And if I do go, at least I know I'd put 100% into it. Danny's paella was delicious. Yeah, absolutely delicious. Moist rabbit, juicy snails and soft rice. Well flavoured. The dessert, I thought the raspberry juice over the figs was delicious. And I would, I would have eaten the, 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 the soggy pastry. Of course I want to get through, so let's see what they say. Hope it's good enough. Two stay, two go. Two go, two stay. Touche. I think we both know who should stay and who should go. We made our decision. Our first quarter finalist. It's Greg. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Our second quarter finalist. Danny. Thank you very much. Thank you. My heart has never beat so loud or fast in my chest, but just amazing, amazing experience. I had a great time. I feel like I could have done better and there's a lot of things I would have changed, but the best two have definitely, definitely gone through. You are quarterfinalists. Quarter finalists of MasterChef. That's incredible. That's more than I've ever, ever have dreamed of. Wow. Wow. What achievement. So proud of myself, you know. I know my mum and dad and my family will be very proud of me as well, so. Yeah. Next time, it's the quarter final. The four Heat winners return to cook for just one critic, face to face. Oh, no. I think that's a really, really great plate of food.